it wasn't anything personal. She just uh, wasn't into boys at that time. And you might ask, so how then were they able to work in the same project? Well, they always had to have a third party through whom Joy would give her input and through whom GK would give her input to Joy. Just to show you how extreme this not talking to GK thing was, one time many of the group members were in the same car and that car almost got into an accident with a big truck and everyone in the car was freaking out except Joy. She was very, very calm. Why? She was too busy pretending that GK did not exist and that she wasn't in the car. Guys who would get this treatment from Joy probably would have written her off saying, you know, if you don't want to talk to me, it's your loss, but not GK. I think deep down inside, GK knew that to talk to somebody, to converse with somebody, to share yourself with somebody was a gift. And so for GK, it wasn't, if you don't want to talk to me, it's your loss. It was more like, if you want to talk with me, it's your gift to give. I go back to this GK and Joy, because you know, this not talking to one another can haunt you in your married life. One of the saddest scenes in married life is when husband and wife are in the same room, at the same table, in the same car, and the children are at the back, and the children are lively, but they only talk through the children. And beyond highs, hellos, and have you paid the bill, they don't talk anymore. GK and Joy, today, on your wedding day, you are promising to each other not just I will talk with you, but I will always share what I have and who I am with you. GK and Joy, give each other that gift always. And I hope that you always see each other as gifts, gifts of the Lord to one another. When GK was still not talking with Joy, I'm sorry, when Joy was still not talking with GK, it was as if Joy had this force field around her. That's how GK describes it. What finally broke this force field around Joy? It was when Joy heard GK sing, that's all I ask of you. No more talk of darkness. Forget those wide-eyed fears, I'm here. Nothing can harm you. And from that time on, GK entered Joy's consciousness. And they started texting about work at first, but soon they started texting about life, the places they had gone to, the places they wanted to visit, what they had eaten, looking at the stars and hamsters. And they would text from 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. One night, during an all-nighter in GK's house, working on that psychology project, Joy finally confronted GK and asked him, what's going on here? And GK said, I think we're getting closer. And that night, GK tucked Joy in. Now, before you get weird ideas, I mean, this was their first night together and suddenly GK was tucking Joy in. There were a lot of other group mates around, and Joy wasn't in GK's bed, she was on GK's couch. But still, GK brought down blankets and fluffed her pillows and gently tucked her in. And GK, I'm sorry, Joy kissed GK goodnight. And after she did that, she was terrified. What had she done? But she was so tired, she said, I'll deal with it in the morning. And when morning came and Joy woke up, she remembered what she had done. And so what did she do? She ran away without saying goodbye to GK. Other guys would have bugged Joy about it. Hey, what's happening here? You kiss me and then you run away without saying goodbye? But not GK. 
GK knew that she, he had to give Joy her space, that he had to respect Joy's rhythm. That's another thing I would like to point out to you guys on your wedding day. Always respect each other's rhythms. Yes, today you become one flesh, but you still remain two different people with different desires, different needs. Yes, you will be going in the same direction, but marching to different bands still. GK and Joy always respect each other's rhythms. In the same breath I say that, I also have to say, but be prepared to break your own rhythms with a little bit of syncopation. Because if you just get locked into your own personal rhythms, then nothing's going to happen to your married life. It'll be just like you were living alone. But I think you guys know this already. Joy. Remember during uh, GK's farewell concert with the Med Choir, how you went around with his scrapbook and asking total strangers to sign in the scrapbook for GK. That was a big thing for Joy because Joy doesn't like talking to total strangers. But she was prepared to break her personal rhythm for GK. GK and Joy, break your personal rhythms while respecting your rhythms as well. It's a balance between the two. And I think if you strike the perfect balance, then instead of just getting locked up in your own personal rhythms, GK and Joy, you will have harmony. Two nights after that famous kissing incident, Joy and GK had the talk. And Joy asked GK, where is this heading? And GK said, where do you want it to go? And Joy said, I think this is the point where we decide if we go on together or take a step back. And GK said, I will fly with you if you will have me. And Joy said, and I will love every minute of your company. What I'd like to point out about that exchange is that most of those lines were done in the future tense. Future tense. This isn't a, a grammatical lesson now, but most of what will happen today, on your wedding day, will be about the future tense. Yes, right now you're here in the present tense. Present and tense. But you're saying yes to the future, which will also be tense. GK and Joy, you're not just saying today, I love you for what you are right now, but I will love you for whom you will become. I will love you forever. GK and Joy, if you always see each other as gifts, if you're always prepared to respect each other's rhythms, but break your personal rhythms as well, then you won't just be facing future tense, a future that is tense. I think there will be a future perfect. GK and Joy, are you ready now to treat each other always as gifts? Are you ready to respect each other's personal rhythms? But are you ready to break your own rhythms to create harmony? Are you ready to create future perfect?